I was always self-conscious type. Do you know that I was self-conscious at one time to such an extent that I couldn't talk to people at all? That's the truth. As a matter of fact, I was once so self-conscious that if I even went to a football game and I saw the players get into a huddle, I used to think that they were talking about me. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I went to a psychiatrist and I said to him, what is it? He said, it's $25 a visit. <laughs> I said, for $25, I don't visit. I move in. <laughs> then he took out an inkblot and he said to me, what do you see from this inkblot? I said, I see that you need a new fountain pen. <laughs> I figured for $25, I'll drive him crazy. <laughs> then he said to me, tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. I said, I want $24 change. <laughs> then he said, I see your trouble. You hate your sister. <laughs> I said, I haven't got a sister. He said, I can't help you if you won't cooperate. <laughs> he said, I'll ask you another question. Thanks a lot. <laughs> He said, I'll ask you another question. Why do you hate your father so much? I said, it so happens that I have the highest respect for my father. He said, then why do you hate your mother? I said, I love my mother. He said, then tell me when you first started to hate your brother. I said, I like him too. He said, then maybe you got a cousin you hate. I said, no, I love everybody. He said, you see, that's your trouble. <laughs> too much love. You got to hate somebody. I said, right now, I'm not so crazy about you. I'll tell you the truth. He said, from all your cousins, you sure you haven't got one cousin that you hate? I'm not asking much. I'm asking one bad cousin. Is that too much to ask? I said, just your luck. I got wonderful cousins. I can't help it. I said, maybe you got a cousin that you hate. He said, as a matter of fact, I do. I said, then that's your problem. He said, yeah, what could I do about that? I said, lay down on the couch. Maybe I can help you out. He said, what is it? I said, it's $25 a visit. Then he said, I'd like to know what you dreamt about last night. I said to myself, what's his business what I dreamt last night? In my dreams, I got it very good. My troubles are when I get up. As a matter of fact, I had a dream the night before for me to tell him that dream, he ought to pay me $25 a night. <laughs> then he said to me, what I really want to know is how you're adjusted to the opposite sex. For instance, then he asked me a very subtle question. I shouldn't know what he's talking about. He said to me, you like girls? I said, sure. He said, sure. The question is why? <laughs> you see that? I never knew that you needed a reason for this. <laughs> he says, what I want to know is if you ever had a true love relationship with any one girl. I said, positively I did. He said, do you remember her name? I said, no. He said, do you remember her address maybe? I said, I don't remember that either. He said, you're not helping me. I said, you never got me any girls either. <laughs> then he said to me, now do you understand why you hate your father? I said, I told you before, I have the highest respect for my father. Don't try to tell me that I hate him. He said, oh, that's another problem. You love to argue. <laughs> I said, I love to argue. He said, that's another problem. Every time I say something, you ask a question. I said, I asked a question. He said, why, you don't? I said, how do you like that? You got the same problem. <laughs> Would you believe it if I tell you that from these preposterous sounding questions, he found out everything that disturbed me from the day I was born. For instance, he discovered that I always felt rejected as a child by my mother because I was a very ugly baby. It's hard to believe. <laughs> the truth. I was. As a matter of fact, I was so ugly as a baby that my mother used to diaper my face. <laughs> but the amazing thing is that not only did my mother hate me, she hated my father too. But my father never knew that my mother hated him. And my father never would have found out about it except for the fact that one day when he happened to get up about three o'clock in the morning, he saw my mother standing next to him with a rifle in her hand. Now, my father is no dog. <laughs> he said to himself, who goes hunting three o'clock in the morning? <laughs> but you see, my mother was only expressing a common malady of the women in America today that she did not know how to express love. Unfortunately, too many women in this country suffer from that problem. They don't know how to express affection and love. 
a professor from Columbia University found this out himself. He traveled the country to find out what percentage of the women in America really know how to express love. And you know what he found out? He found out that three out of four women had no idea how to express love. But that fourth woman, you hear? <laughs> Do you know that to this day they still haven't found that professor? <laughs> They're not looking for him. They're looking for that fourth woman. <laughs> now, let me explain what happened. Do you know that just because my mother hated me, I was very lucky because on the other hand, my father hated me too. So I wasn't too lucky. But people in general couldn't stand me either. <laughs> so all this hate made me think that I wasn't popular. As a matter of fact, my psychiatrist explained to me that because I didn't get enough love from human beings, I had to find something else to fall in love with. As a matter of fact, he told me that in desperation, unconsciously, I fell in love with my galoshes. <laughs> I said, that's ridiculous. I love my galoshes. Who would believe a thing like that? That's stupid. All right, I like my galoshes. <laughs> I got beautiful galoshes, I'll tell you the truth. Still, I don't love them. I'll admit I hugged them once in a while. <laughs> but I wouldn't kiss them. Because that's not normal. How can I love my galoshes? It's impossible. I love my umbrella. 